Yeah. Somebody probably met somebody who met somebody who got it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Good evening. I will call the regular meeting of the Brookfield Board of Education to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We have everyone except for Jen here tonight. Um, and our first agenda item is board recognition. So <laughs> I'll hand that over to you, Dr. Brown. Thank you, Mrs. Fernandez. <laughs> so uh, March uh, is Board of Education Appreciation Month. And uh, on behalf of the entire uh, Brookfield Public Schools, we'd like to extend a congratulations and a thank you for all that the board does. Uh, I say it every single year, multiple times, not just on this evening, that uh, in, in small town America and especially our system in Connecticut, the elected positions of Board of Education, elected volunteer positions are the hardest in terms of uh, the difficulty and the commitment of time uh, and, and frankly the responsibility you all have. So I, we just thank you. We really appreciate you and um, I just want to extend our best wishes for all you do and let's keep on doing it together. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank, thank you. you. And Rosa, do you want to introduce, as part of this, do you want to introduce Michelle? Uh, yeah. Or would you um, like to? So tonight, actually, we have um, Dr. Michelle Embry Koo, who is the chair of the Newtown Board of Education, and she has something that she would like to share with us. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Good evening. I'm glad to be able to contribute to this celebration. Um, Good evening, Superintendent Burrell, Chair Fernandez, and board members of the Brookfield Board of Education. Um, first, I'd like to take care of some business that um, Cabe has us do, and that is to present you with a certificate of membership to the Cabe um, organization. Maybe to Rosa. So the CABE organization um, helps support boards of education around the state, and so that's just a certificate to indicate that CABE supports you and welcomes you into um, the organization. So I'm really here on behalf of CABE to recognize the efforts of the Brookfield Public Schools and to present you with two awards. Um, with these awards, CABE's goal is to identify and honor the hard work of people in the school districts for their continuing efforts to communicate effectively. In order to receive these Bonnie B. Carney Awards of Excellence for Educational Communications, entries must meet all of the following criteria. They must have a clarity of message, image, and consistency. They must be readable, have good editing, graphics, type, format, presentation, design, and a value of expenditure. So I'm very happy to present the Brookf Brookfield Board of Education with these two awards for excellence for educational communication. Um, the first one is the category for special project in audiovisual. It's the Board of Education Chairman's video for the new school. The video was developed to provide the community with information outlining the rationale and vision for the new school project. Let's see if I can get these. There we go. And the second one is in the category of computer generated projects, the new school project website. The website provides information regarding the new school project by archiving information, communications, updates from the construction of a new kindergarten through grade five elementary school in Brookfield. Um, and this is the second one. Take it out of the wrapper and make it extra shine. Yeah. So I just wanted to say congratulations to you all on your good hard work at communicating and um, keeping the public informed and it's all really good work and CABE would like to extend their appreciation for all you do for our students around the state and especially in Brookfield. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming, Michelle. Thank you very much. And I do have 
have to add that um, the first award in particular really, um, we should really extend a very heartfelt thanks to our former chair, um, Colette Sturm, who was the voice of that project. Um, oh. I'm not on. Oh. So anyway, so that first award, um, I do want to publicly thank our former chair, Colette Sturm. She was the voice for um, that video that um, is recognized with that first award. Um, and of course, we share all of these accolades with our administration, who has been phenomenal with communicating the message and working tirelessly for this new school project. So thank you, and thank you. Thank you, thank you Michelle. And we should also mention that um, unrelated to the communication, working on our uh, start times committee, Michelle and some of her team came in from Newtown and actually shared their experience with, with us. So it's been a nice partnership between the communities. So thank you for that as well. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And then I also have to share with you, we've had these displayed because they weren't the formal um, actual winners, but we had three honorable mentions for communications mm -hmm. as part of the um, the Bonnie uh, B. Carney Awards of Excellence in Communication. One was for social media, another for our Going Green project that our own Lisa Gramling is the facilitator of, and also for our um, continued work on the newsletters, uh, the Brookfield, Brookfield Broadcast. So I'll pass those around as well so you can see those certificates. Here you go. And then we display these at the central office. You don't want to run out of wall space. It's great. It really is nice. <laughs> That's a nice problem to have. Set. All set. Well, thank you so very much for coming, yeah. and we appreciate it. Of course. Um, we can move on to public comment, and there is no one signed up. So, unless I don't see anyone else here who would like to speak, probably. So, uh, we can move on to the <laughs> student representative report. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, so I'm just going to kind of detail some events that we've already had and are going to have in March. So I'll start in chronological order. Um, so actually today we celebrated National Inclusion Day and R Word Campaign Day at BHS. So basically the athletic advisory and Best Buddies, um, they help spread the word in the cafeteria. Um, there was a large um, poster that everyone signed in support of inclusivity. Um, and actually I'd like to read the announcement that was shared today, like in school. Um, so it goes, Brookfield High School, BHS, BHS Athletic Advisory, and Best Buddies are proud to have joined the National Inclusion and R Word campaign today. BHS needs your support for Spread the Word Inclusion campaign to help take a stand against discriminatory words and actions to create a more inclusive world. We can create a more accepting world by working to integrate individuals with intellectual disabilities into realms of society from which they are excluded. A lack of inclusion has become a hurtful norm to millions of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, their families and their friends. Please take the pledge today to spread the word of inclusion during the lunches. Also please think about doing the Penguin Pledge plunge at Candlewood Lake on March 15th to raise money for our Unified Sports and Special Olympics Connecticut. Remember today and every day to respect the unique abilities of everyone and spread the word of inclusion. So bring it here so she can yeah. take a picture. Yes, this is our poster that so many students signed today. Wow, that's nice. And it'll be here for you if you want to sign before you leave. Sure, we yeah. we all can sign. Why don't you stand here and show it to? Yeah, maybe you could turn. Yeah, stand yeah, so in front so of Mr. Belden and oh Mrs. Fernandez. <laughs> At least they can definitely get it picked up. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a delay, so you have to stay there a little up. extra longer. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> hey, there you go, Mr. Belanda. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mark. Mm -hmm. So that's something very special that happened today that I wanted to share. Um, also, on March 27th, we have our junior prom. So that's, again, at the Ethan Allen Hotel. And so student council is having their preparations for that, which is great. Um, and then March 31st is our St. Baldrick's Foundation fundraiser in the BHS cafeteria from 6 to 8 p.m. So this fundraiser is very close to my heart. I've gotten very close to it the past couple of years, especially as a peer counselor. Um, I'm like very heavily involved in it. 
Um, and we're really trying to make it big this year. We're trying to reach out to every business possible. We're, we just went out to the middle school yesterday to prevent, pre sorry, <laughs> to present to their student council and their peer counseling so they can put up posters around the school. Um, we're getting the Brookfield Fire and Police Department again to have a competition. So basically like the team that doesn't raise the most money will have their heads shaved, um, which is what happened last year and it was really fun. Um, Chick-fil-A comes as usual. They send their cow in, they sponsor us. Um, we're trying to have different school teams compete. We're trying to have um, different sports teams sign up to shave their heads. So I'm very excited for that event and like, really looking forward to it. So in terms of March, that's what's going on. It's great. Any questions? It's exciting. Thank you. Thanks, Masi. Uh, up next, we have written correspondence. Sherry Styronovsky shared an opinion letter. Ron Jaffe wrote regarding the attitudes and behavior survey. Melissa Yeager wrote regarding the budget. Pete Peterson wrote regarding a program for schools on distracted driving. And Jill and Jean Ropiak wrote regarding fourth grade curriculum. Okay, thank you. Uh, we can move to the approval of board minutes. I'll make a motion that the board approve the minutes listed below as recommended from the regular meeting February 19th, 2020. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The superintendent's update. All right. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Fernandez. Uh, I have. Uh, two items formally on my uh, update, and then I realized there was something else I wanted to share. Um, the first one is uh, we had our, uh, the fir for the first time ever in Brookfield, the Connecticut School Finance Project visited us last, uh, I think it was last Monday night, and um, Erica Haynes put on a very nice presentation. I think it was quite informative. Um, there was uh, a number of uh, folks uh, from the community came out. I think outside of some of the elected officials, we probably had uh, 15 to 20 guests there, and uh, everybody left. I think feeling much more informed than they, they were before on how between the f federal government down through the state government and to, to the local government how education is funded. Uh, so that was a great project and, and, and having those folks in. The other piece I wanted to share is uh, regarding uh, coronavirus. Everybody's hearing about this on the news and I know that I shared with the board uh, the letter I had sent to the families last week. Um, I just wanted to go over a couple of things that we continue to do here in terms of our vigilance. Um, some of you may have seen in the Brookfield patch there was an article that uh, was either out last night or this morning. I uh, spoke with a reporter from the patch and shared some of those things, and I thought uh, he did an ex excellent job capturing what, what we're, we're, we're doing in terms of uh, remaining clean and being proactive. Uh, so number one, I had a letter uh, that I sent out last week with appropriate links and guidance and so forth uh, to reassure families that we're on top of things, but at the same time, here are some precautions you can take and here's some information for you uh, in terms of the CDC, Connecticut Public Health Department, et cetera. The department has met with Mr. Dunn last week, and we went uh, through some of the preparedness activities that we need to be involved in, and the town does have a pandemic uh, flu plan, and so that's certainly being modified for coronavirus and that kind of a thing. Uh, the Board of Education and the, and the school administration really isn't involved in that, because if there is that situation where the schools have to be closed down, we wouldn't be here. The schools would be closed down and people would be quarantined. Um, However, uh, the buildings are always uh, available, and BHS is a shelter, so if that was a need, we would obviously be in involved in that, all depending on the situation. We also work with Dr. Sullivan, our health director, and our consulting uh, physician, Dr. Ferrara. Um, in addition to that, I have a call scheduled tomorrow uh, with uh, CAPS, so the Western Connecticut Superintendent Group, my group that I'm the chairman of here on this end of the state. We're talking with Dr. Rabinowitz from CAPS, who today met with the Commissioner of Education and some folks from the Connecticut Health Department to see if there's any updates for us. We're going to try to get a weekly call going, a regularly scheduled call, at least during the next couple of weeks to make sure we're on top of things. And then finally, literally at 447 this afternoon, Dr. Farrar, our con consulting physician, sent me an update on how the school principals are to handle students who are just coming back from being out of the country at affected countries such as China, Japan, Iran, Korea, and Italy. And so 
um, there's a little bit more of a protocol there than we had before. We didn't have direction. And so encouraging the, the, the children and their parents to go to the pediatrician to get formal clearance and a note before we could admit them back to school. So those are the kinds of things we're, we're working on. In addition to that, our custodial team is, you know, the, the surface cleaning, getting at the doorknobs, making sure that, you know, priority of trash being emptied, hit the doorknobs, hit the surfaces, those kinds of things, um, door handles uh, and the like. Um, and so those, those are the things we're, we're working on. I don't know if anybody has any questions on that. Um, we're just being extra vigilant. While business as usual, I was quoted as that in the paper, while it is business as usual, we're, what's not usual is how close, you know, much we're paying attention to this and being proactive. Monty, how are, how are students viewing this? Are they being vigilant and careful about washing their hands and things like that? I mean, I would hope so. It's definitely been a topic of discussion, okay. I think, among students. I think we're all wondering, you know, is school going to be shut down? How <laughs> far has it spread? Um, in general, though, I think people are like, they are washing their hands, I, I would hope, um, more regularly. So that's good. OK. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Any other? Yeah. And then I, I had, oh, any more? I was going to say, hopefully, first. they're using the hand sanitizers that the Girl Scouts that's right. put in. Yeah. That's right. Thanks to those Girl Scouts, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. Yep. Well, Which, what was the true, what's the troop number? So. We, have to, we have to do a shout out. What was the troop number? Is it five? I should know it. I well, anyway, have to look it we thank those Girl Scouts. That was a yeah. great project. One of them's a next door neighbor, so I will make sure. Please I'm, pass it on I'll in pass person. It on, I'll pass it on from the board. And, and don't shake your hand. Do the elbow touch. Like the <laughs> <says>. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Oh, and then I yeah. had okay. one more thing, mm -hmm. Rosa. Yeah. Was I just wanted to mention that the um, ruler, um, as all of you know, we're using that as our uh, SEL tool, um, hosted uh, in New Haven this week their first ever annual conference, the, the first one. Um, and uh, it's a national conference, and uh, Dr. Ruby was able to attend that. So we're looking forward to when she comes back and she'll be able to share what she's learned there and some of the other opportunities that might be uh, coming up because of our involvement with Ruler mm -hmm. and, you know, such a great relationship now with Yale and Dr. Brackett. So I wanted to make sure you all knew about that. Yeah, that's great. And that's all I have. Okay. Up next, we have subcommittee reports, and facilities is first. Okay, so we had a special meeting on the 19th of February. Mr. Qual will update us on many projects. Most exciting one is the high school generator is on and working. Good. Yay. So that's the high school generator is on and working. The middle school generator has been ordered to be here in about 12 weeks. Um, we're continuing with the paving. It's upcoming at the high school, the driveway, curbing at the athletic entrance, um, and it's upcoming at the middle school. So this is phase two at the middle school. So there was 240,000 set in the budget and it will cost 192700 so we'll be able to just pave more until we can't go any further. So we're looking to add a turning lane up to the street, and it doesn't have to be re-engineered, so we can use the specs that we have. So that's exciting news for all parents that exit during the crowded times at Whiskanier, we will have a right-hand turn <laughs> lane that goes up the hill. So for buses or cars or whatever, that's, that's going to make it a lot better for everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's actually very exciting Very news. exciting. The high school HVAC controls, so um, we're going to have a, a reporting is going to be taking place over April break for phase one. We're looking to standardize our systems with the new school in Wiskineer because we're currently working with five operating systems for four buildings. So a building management system is coming in and they're going to do a really comprehensive reporting during April break. We're updated on staffing. There's still three open positions, a day custodian at Wiskineer, a day head custodian at the high school, and a night custodian to split between buildings and also a maintenance mechanic. So we have, we're in the process of interviewing, interviewing for the day head custodian at the high school, and we have some quality applicants for maintenance mechanic. So that's looking up. We discussed the locker room project and we invited Tecton Architects to our next meeting. We spoke with um, Eddie from Tecton to get more clarity on the cost estimates and discuss available options. We're looking to do a presentation for the board at our April 1st meeting presentation to have more further discussions um, about how to proceed. So look forward to that. 
And Mr. Cole will also inform the committee about a burst pipe in the high school nurse's office that happened that previous weekend. So currently the heating coil has been replaced. It's been cleaned, dehumidified, and furniture has been ordered and then gestures came in. So that's the update so far for the nurse's office. And that's about it. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. Next we have policy. Okay. Um, our last meeting was on February 19th. And um, we continued discussion of policy 4118.52, which was use of web tools. We just felt like we really needed to um, spend a good amount of time discussing what kind of web tools that included but you know we were in a good place right now with that policy and it is part of your packet tonight for a first read so we'll go over that a little bit more later we also had um, Terry Cavanaugh come to our meeting she's our director of HR and she um, really sort of gave us an overview about uh, sexual harassment harassment in general and the idea of staff student fraternization which we needed to uh, sort of tighten up our policies on so you'll see again later tonight that those three areas policies are in your packet for a first read um, we had policies in place that you know were sort of wordy and overly complicated so you'll see when we get to those later that we've really streamlined and simplified those we also talked about the tutoring policy for um, teachers tutoring outside of school hours that is also in your packet and um, that was pretty much it for policy we did talk communications is in, included in our policy meetings and we talked about the need for a budget flyer coming up in the next few months before um, before we vote on the budget and I'll be working on that with Mike Murphy and Dr. Burrell so that's it great any questions for Debbie or the policy committee all right uh, we can move on to the consent agenda <coughs> I make a motion that the board approve the items listed below on the consent consent agenda as recommended resignations and new hires second okay any discussion all in favor aye, aye. okay we can move on to new business policies okay. I make a motion that the board approve policy 4118.52 use of new web tools for a first reading as recommended by the policy and communication subcommittee second okay okay so again um, this policy is a CABE policy we didn't currently have a policy for web tools um, so we, we developed this policy to include um, things that they use in the ASL program and things like Google Classroom and Blackboard. Um, so I think other than that, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. All right. Any initial questions on this? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next policy. I make a motion that the board approve policy 4118.112, sexual harassment for a first reading as recommended by the policy communication subcommittee. Second. Okay, so this is what I mentioned previously. Um, this is a sexual harassment policy. We had a policy in place that actually dated back to 1992. Wow. Um, it was very wordy, overly complicated, and mm. had many, many examples of things that be, could be considered sexual harassment. And 
what CABE has recommended um, is to really streamline it and, and make it just clear and concise and convey the uh, message that sexual harassment is, you know, not tolerated in any case, but that really the definition of sexual harassment is what the victim um, perceives it to be. So there won't be any um, really negotiation or interpretation of, of anybody saying, well, that's not on the list as something that qualifies mm -hmm. for sexual harassment. So, so the CABE uh, policy just really simplifies it, makes it uh, very direct, very clear. And, and Deb, if I may add to that, just so everybody's aware, there will be, there, uh, there's a new state law that I think it's by October 1st, uh, all staff has to be trained. So Terry's working, you know, uh, with, with myself and Dr. Ruby and trying to look at time and, and how we can make that work. Uh, many districts are figure, trying to figure that out. There's almost 400 employees, so that's, uh, the, everybody has to be trained. So we have to get that done by October 1st. So there's a lot of means and we could use technology and there's some other things we could do, but we're thinking of using, um, at least one of our initial professional development days in late August to make sure that happens to stay in compliance. Yeah, we do like a video. We have to do a video. Yeah, there, there's 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 video day. and there's some other ways you can yeah, do we that. Do video yeah, too. yeah. So, mm -hmm. so. It, it mentions in the new policy that the superintendent will develop a uh, regulation that underlies this. Uh, is that something that's underway? That's it, it, it's it is talked about being underway. I can't confirm if it's actually underway yet okay. uh, in Terry's office. We've been okay. quite busy over there, but yes, it has to be done. Yep. Okay. That's why good. So it could be at least good day because they kind of support one. Another. Yes. Right. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, any other questions on that one? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next motion. I make a motion that the board approve policy 4118.113 harassment for a first reading as recommended by the policy communication subcommittee. Second. Okay, so again, this, um, we didn't have a version of this. We didn't have this as a policy previously, but it is recommended by CABE. So this is CABE's version. Um, and uh, again, it's, it really just simplifies the idea um, and basically conveys the thought that uh, any harassment of any kind will not be tolerated. Um, you know, in that we're here to provide a safe and positive uh, working and learning climate. And there are some examples. Uh, of various forms of harassment, what harassment might include. We have, uh, we feel comfortable with CABE's version, so we're recommending that we go ahead and, and use their version. So this wasn't edited at all but from what CABE um, right? There was one word that we did take out under on the first page number one where it says um, that the incident had to be sufficiently severe persistent or pervasive that it affects an individual disability we took out the word sufficiently because we didn't want again we didn't want there to be a gray area where someone could challenge it and say well it wasn't that severe or mm. whatever so we took out that word. But other than that, we, we uh, recommend adopting their policy as written. Okay. All right, any questions on this one? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Last policy. Okay, I make a motion that the board approve policy 4118.24, staff student non-fraternization for a first reading as recommended by the policy communication subcommittee. Second. Okay, so. <laughs> this one's short. This one is short, which is a good thing because <laughs> the previous version we had was much longer and it put, um, 
it put a, it sort of had a lot of fluff in there, I, what I'll call fluff, um, talking about uh, what the relationship between a teacher and a shouldn't, student should feel like, and you know we should be encouraging, and all, all that's true, but I don't know that it belongs in a policy. So um, again, we're recommending that we go with the CABE version that um, basically just says that staff members shall maintain professional relationships with students and there will be no interaction of a sexual nature with any student at any time period. So we sort of stripped out everything mm -hmm. around that language and got concise and to the point. We tried to make it as short as the petty cash policy, but yeah. we, didn't, we didn't quite get there. <laughs> Still short, though. Was it as long as the fiscal year policy? I heard you snicker over there, but <laughs> I knew you were thinking about that. Okay. I did have one question on, it's actually on all three of these. Mm -hmm. um, if, if ever one of these policies was broached or breached, um, it would be an immediate legal issue for the district. Has Terry reviewing these with council before we, uh, as a board, approve them? I believe she said she did. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We can double check that, but I'm sure. pretty sure she Question. said she had. I, I just don't know that Cabe actually runs them through council. Well, no, Cabe our, actually does. They don't run them through ours, obviously, but there's right. there's uh, attorneys at Cabe that um, vet these, these policies okay. before they're sent out. Yes. I just want to Excuse make me. sure they're consistent with law mm -hmm. and consistent with issues that we would anticipate might mm -hmm. ever come up with one sure. of them. Hopefully that never happens. Because you have to trigger an investigation. But and if they was else. ever breached, yep. this is this immediately becomes a legal matter. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 The last policy. Okay, I'll make a motion that the board approve policy 4134 tutoring for a first read as recommended by the policy communication subcommittee. Oh, second. Okay, uh, so tutoring, we had a policy, uh, I think, that originated in 1999. It was revised in 2012. Um, I think it, it gave some allowance for, for tutoring um, and we do allow, what we're suggesting now is that teachers may work for an outside service provider and do tutoring and teachers may also tutor students who are not uh, in their buildings and at their grade level. So in other words, um, an elementary school teacher can also tutor middle school math or something. The, what the policy says though now, what we're recommending from CABE is that um, teachers not be allowed to tutor students that are in their uh, building in their, at their grade level. It doesn't say their grade level though. It's their, it's their own students. Right. So are they able to Not use in the any building where the teacher to provide tutoring? In, no. Uh, no teacher shall private students of any school. Wait, wait, wait. wait I want to make sure it I just says that a school teacher where the teacher teach class private. classes. It doesn't say anything about their classes. But it applies to the whole school. Yeah, it's it applies to the whole school. So, so, so an eighth grade too. teacher couldn't tutor a fourth grader. Not, well, no, not as it is. No. Uh, right. no uh, fifth grader. Fourth grade oh, fifth grader. Yeah. Right. Fifth yeah. grader. Okay. Yeah. Right. They right. couldn't. Not in their own school. Right. And, uh, and a science teacher couldn't, in the high school, couldn't tutor someone in math. Right. Correct. We, we would be looking at, you know, the extra help and those kind of things rather than a uh, charging parents for uh, tutoring right. in those they situations. Right, privately do it. It's not really a, uh, a major issue. Um, early on in my tenure here, there was... Uh, it was a bit of an issue because we were the, the, some faculty members were also using the building to tutor their own students and make a profit from that. And so that was problematic. So um, it wasn't rampant or anything like that. Um, and we just appealed to the good faith of the people to understand the conflict of interest and it was, it was easily uh, rectified.
Okay. Any other questions or comments on this? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Old business. Um, the first point. Oh, actually, before we move on to that, um, what day would you like us to have comments back for these policies? Your April meeting, right? 16th, right? It, it's yeah. Or is it, 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 it this? Or does it move? The 18th? It's, I think it's the 18th. Yeah, we have, to, they have one on the 18th. When is the next policy yep. meeting? Because April's a short, the way that April's a short month of vacation. <coughs> Is it March 18th? Yes. It is. The, oh, okay. So it's not for April. Yeah, it's March. Do you want it just by the 20th? Well. So by next week then? Next Friday maybe? Do you want that? Is that okay? That's a week and a half? Okay. Yeah, some of these are pretty short. Okay. Yeah, so by Friday, March 13th. These are all pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we can move on to old business, and the first item is the Board of Education's budget for the year 2020-2021. Um, just to kind of update you guys as a sort of a quick summary, when we initially adopted the budget, we had proposed a 6.65% increase over this current year's adopt, um, approved budget. The first step after we had presented to the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance was um, the first selectman gets to review and make um, deliberations on that and he had reduced our budget at that point to 4.8 percent um, since then he has presented to the board the entire board of selectmen and it has um, gone up slightly to five percent so we're still looking at a pretty sizable but the, but the um, cuts the same it's just yes. the five percent is just a different way of how they presented the percent yeah what okay. we, we looked at today rosa it wasn't we actually found <laughs> It wasn't in, in you know, a less of a reduction to the budget. It's um, incorporating, it, it took out the uh, kindergarten teacher that was appropriated at the beginning of the year. Okay. The fiscal so just year. showing the percentage yeah. off a different page. Okay. It's, it's using our original So we're looking at the same exact number. Same number, yeah. yes. So um, do you have any, um, Dr. Brill, any updates in terms of where, um, I know yeah. at our last meeting we sort of said there wasn't much that we could yeah, so do at this point. Right? Sure. So in terms, in terms of an update, the first part of the update is really nothing's changed in the last two weeks because um, we were waiting on the Board of Selectmen and they voted last night. So now we're, we're, we're waiting. For, it's going over to the Board of Finance, so we'll see where the Board of Finance uh, lands in terms of leaving it where it is or uh, putting some more money back or taking some uh, a further reduction. So we just don't know that. Um, I can tell you what we've done is uh, the the um, the principals. Uh, well, first of all, the uh, board of finance and um, board of selectmen questions. There's well over a hundred questions that were asked about the budget line line by line, and so can the principals, myself, department heads. We've been working on that for the last uh, two weeks, essentially. Um, we're nearing finalizing that, and then the plan would be to bring that before the Finance Committee on Monday night, make sure you guys are comfortable with that, uh, the committee's comfortable, and then, and then uh, Rosa, I guess, would, you would send that off. So that's, that's the thought process there, so we're working on that. Um, in addition to that, uh, the principals and I uh, met with Ken, um, and Eric was there too yesterday, and Dr. Ruby and everybody else, and we went through and we continue to scrub the budget. Uh, they are looking um, in every one of their areas. Um, I know a big area where uh, the town the, the town officials were asking questions was the actual budget from last year compared to what we're asking for in the adopted budget, and they're looking at that increase and a lot of questions about that. Many times, what that question comes down to is every year we're on a budget freeze. So we don't spend what we intended to spend and it had budgeted for. So that's part of the explanation with a lot of these things, but we're really uh, digging in so we could provide a lot of justification and they could understand where these costs are coming from. So we're doing that work um, and then preparing for um, whatever happens next week with the Board of Finance. And then I would imagine if that timing works out, we'd have a very lengthy discussion. I'd bring forward recommendations um, from the team to the board on the, at the March 18th meeting. It's kind of my understanding of where we're at in terms of process. We did have 
um, some very good news, um, and hopefully it stands, working with the town and paying attention to our insurance premium, we had budgeted 9.5% increase, and it looks like it'll come in at 6.5%. Um, that's a difference of about $170,000, Ken? No, that's $167,000. $167,000. Uh, Ken, you, you had an exercise you were going to do. You're going to really go through with that? and. Yeah, I users. did the initial budget back in October with our census of employees at that time, and uh, I'm sure some of it has changed, so I'm going to update it. So, since I'm going to be updating the number anyway, I'm going to update it with the most up-to-date information I have. So it may be a little more or less of a savings than, uh, than the 167000 that I've calculated at the moment. But considering a reduction of $817,000 yeah. to the adopted budget, that's a nice Something. chunk right off the bat that... <coughs> doesn't affect programming at all. It mm -hmm. helps in our administrative costs. So that's the really positive news. So what we've, we've the, the, the team and, and I have been discussing is kind of how do we want to approach these reductions? So we, we start with looking at the strategic plan, our strategic priorities. What are the most important to continue with? Um, so again, we're going to continue the banter and going back and forth and really pushing each other. We look at the budget goals for, the, for this year, which were to maintain class size, uh, meet the needs of all students in, in terms of state and federal law, uh, continue to provide the best curriculum we can and make sure it's aligned to standards and up to date, uh, and then of course the technology to support our infrastructure uh, in our learning environment, and then finally uh, maintain and continue to enhance programs. And again, when you get into budget cuts, sometimes you have to look at either slowing down or, or uh, really bringing back your momentum on whatever the projects are that you're working on. We want to stay away from people. Uh, we want to stay away from those things that are uh, is direct, really directly related to kids for as far as we can as we continue to chip away at getting to that $800,000 number. Um, and so uh, then the other piece is we have to look at you know programmatic data in terms of are we getting the value we expect out of a program and, and those would be other uh, other pieces uh, as part of the decision and whatever the recommendation would be coming forward. So that's kind of our process. Um, I don't know if anybody has any further questions about kind of the thinking from the team, from me, um, any recommendations, like, you know, suggestions of how we might approach things. We're happy so, to listen. So will that process culminate in a discussion on the, at our 18th meeting? That, that would be the plan. And, and, and it, I would look for direction from the board because I'm assuming, and again, I don't know the, the, I can't get into the exact planning of the Board of Finance, but I'm assuming at their meeting, uh, some of their meetings next week, they may make an, a formal decision on the Board of Ed's budget um, in terms of the timing. So that's that's really the question I have at this point. They don't um, have to make I don't a, think they, they have to. They don't have to make a formal decision sure. until, um, until after their public hearing in April. Okay. Um, so they might choose to mm -hmm. make stepwise decisions, um, mm -hmm. but uh, considering that we don't have a plan of attack on it, they may ask us to come back, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And in fact, if I was on that board, that's what I would sure. ask us to do. Sure. Um, so uh, again, $817,000 is quite a bit of money to, to find, um, and so we're going to continue to work on it. Um, we were prepared to have a conversation on the 18th. Uh, hopefully we'd know more if the Board of Finance anticipates or makes a formal vote on reducing it further. So we would, you know, when there's another couple hundred thousand dollars if that was to happen, we, we need to approach it that way. So um, it's a conundrum and, and it's, it's not going to be a pleasant conversation and it's going to hurt. So um, we're prepared to have the conversation. So we're continuing to work on it. And the principles are, are literally as we speak, we, we're uh, answering their questions and going through each of their budgets at the principals meeting yesterday are the kind of the key areas that we need to really look at sharpen the pencil scrub look at the actuals uh, double check triple check um, and so they're doing that I have to give them a lot of credit they've been working very hard on their budgets so we'll uh, we'll be prepared to have recommendations for the 18th for sure so as much as you can any of those placeholder values or numbers that were sort of estimates at the time the budget was constructed are going to be sort of tightened up. Yes. Right? So to the extent possible. Yes. Okay. So, so I mean, I, I think of two that came up at the joint meeting that were discussions. Uh, sewer, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, Ken and Hoy and Joan did all the running around on that. It's actually going to cost us $2,000 more than what Ken had in the budget um, when we actually really, uh, really got the information <laughs> from them. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> and, um, yeah. And then, <laughs> then they put that in writing to us, I hope. Yeah, well, you yeah. have emails and everything. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Make sure we have a copy of that. Sure. <laughs> Next one. Sure. So it's even more expensive, you know, considering the usage and, and the number of students and that kind of a thing, so the number of staff. Um, 
we're really digging in on postage. You know, there's some reasons for increases, uh, such as sending IEPs for uh, students with special needs home, uh, and those kinds of things. It's not as simple as people well, just send it electronically. Yeah. Uh, parents actually have to sign permission for that. There's 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 mm -hmm. uh, specific legislation there. You have to be very careful uh, with those kind of records. Uh, they have to be protected, and there's other things that have to happen. So there are um, there are expenses. And, so uh, but we're gonna really go through just that the thought, the as you package up the responses to the questions because that's a big piece of work a yes. lot of questions yes. and I would have to say half of the questions as I read through them were just because they didn't understand our budget changes over time mm -hmm. and how we've rebucketed things or it was tied to freezes right Correct. those seem Very to be the so. two Glad themes um, my advice would be to have a little one pager on the front that says updates on estimates mm -hmm. right where you have updates on estimates mm -hmm. you know the insurance point is number to top front and sure. center I think the uh, sewer cost you mm -hmm. know what did you get maybe with a backup chart or two mm -hmm. or like a copy of the email because mm -hmm. we got criticized at the last meeting for yes. not communicating as we found those updates yes and it is part of our solution right that we have to deal with here mm -hmm. but I think we need to be open and communicate mm -hmm. so and I just think that's just the same. That's probably not a very long page. It's probably nope. you know, three sure, or four or five know. items. The second thing I'll just say about that, Ken, is at our Retirement Benefits Committee, uh, the town controller mentioned that she had recently gotten an update from our actuary on retirement. Yes. Um, and I just want to make sure we have the latest number on that. Yes, I have that. Okay, good. It will actually increase the... I was going to say that yeah. sounded like it was going up. It is. Right. So we're considering that when we for all the reduction sure so. sure but that ought to be part of that update on that estimates, update yeah, right? yeah, yeah sewer and yeah yeah insurance just, just that just to add to the, the salary thing um <clears throat> the increasing in numbers it's i i get that's that's kind of hard to budget for but we started 118 i believe in november for what for, for the salary reductions as far as missed time retirements the teacher, turnover? Turnover? teacher turnover teacher turnover teacher turnover uh -huh. right so we had but it seems like that number always ends up being a lot higher towards the end of the year. There's two different things we were talking about. We have teacher turnover is one thing, right. and that's where we hire new people to replace the old people that have retired. And then we also have uh, savings on leaves Such. and vacancies, which is the number that continues to, uh, yeah. to so change during the that year. That number, I mean, to the, to the Board of Finance's you know, defense a little bit, they, they, that number isn't on the budget as far as you know subs, and we hired a new uh, substitute contract we have a contract with a new substitute mm -hmm. uh, third party yes yes uh, and that number is 375 uh, uh, $375,000 dollars is that number based off of how many teachers we use is it based off of how many hours it's really based off of history it, it can fluctuate so much if well, you look back in our high. history well it depends on what year you're looking at well, there are some years like when it's, when it's significantly lower yeah there were it depends on how many uh, long-term subs we okay. have and typically, when we have long-term substitutes, we have salary savings yeah. to offset it. I just so, I mean, we could, uh, you could pick a right, much higher substitute number and then put there's a no much line, higher. There's no line items no. underneath it, like with, no. the, with the teacher salary and, and, and turnovers, no. there's no line items under that. So no. it's, that, it doesn't make it hard to follow. Yeah. It, it makes it pretty hard to predict, yes. which I don't have your job. Also, I saw, what is a special ed BCBA? Well, it's a board certified behavior analyst. So, so th th those services from a yeah. board certified behavior analyst, those folks work with our students with social and emotional issues and our students in our ELC program. And they work, it's all about behavior and socialization and so forth. And so they are part of helping us with our internal um, programs that we have in relating back to our uh, programs for outplacement it's so we're able to help service our students here in district okay. um, and so it actually is an investment in cost savings right just, it yeah. wasn't part of the other slides it just was on this one on this page it wasn't part of the other like initial presentations on, on, on the new hires it's not new it's not new we've had it's not CBA. New. no okay so the way this looks like it looks like it's new it's just the the person is uh, code it's accounted for with in the teacher's account but it's not a certified teaching position okay so it doesn't fall on that grid so they're not part of the teacher separately they're not part of the teacher's union they're they're uh, right but hire. you have teachers on here too you have a second grade teacher it's all part of this line here so I don't I just don't understand why 
so this this 101,000 this was already taken out in budgets prior this is a salary this is so, salary. so now I see it's a salary because it's a person but it's a person who was in the budget last year also so okay so it's not it's not it's new, not new. No. Yeah, it's so not the way I see it I just see the plus here um, also uh, in, uh, I thought I was looking at some of the uh, salaries and it appears that we have three people in the high school that do curriculum writing the, the depart, department heads they're department yeah. heads but they're called curriculum specialists, specialists. Curriculum specialists. We have, no, they're they're not, world language Spanish and they are also not teachers they're administrators they're in the right. administrative group yes so I, I hear in other districts that those those positions also teach so can we maybe use one of them as the math interventionist instead of hiring another well, position they, they have uh, evaluative um, responsibilities and curriculum respiting uh, responsibilities and coaching responsibilities so that's the the, the depth okay the so there is all job. yeah so they're they're administrating things. during the day right um there have been times in our uh not too far uh, gone past where those um uh, curriculum specialist positions or when they were more categorized as department chairs of single subjects so for example just to give you some history here right now we have a stem curriculum specialist that person is in charge of at least 20 maybe 21 teachers in their stem department which is right. science technology and math I might even be close closer to 25 um, science technology and mathematics that was part of a consolidation effort a couple of years ago when we reduced an administrator to bring the math and science together as one and also to bring the social studies and English together as one. And so we actually net reduced an administrator in that particular year um, for savings. And so, um, but when they were just department heads of one department where they may have had nine or ten teachers as a responsibility, there was years where they taught either one class or sometimes two. So um, it's, it's not unheard of. Um, We'd have to look at that, but with the greater responsibility now, I don't know that it'd be realistic um, to have that as just part of the job description that they they teach a class. But we've actually had Mr. Blanton. Well, not has a class. The math interventionals. I know. Yeah, that's, yeah that's but a class, they couldn't teach a full time class. There's no. It's already a full time job, okay. so they, they wouldn't be able to be the. As far math. as being a math interventionalist. Yes, they just couldn't. But maybe teaching a class. We've had those discussion one class or something. If we had an overflow or something right. one year for a short time. But in terms of well, picking up. See if I can a, save a position. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> we've we've talked about it a little bit. That's, that's definitely a yeah. nice idea. Um, and in the past when it was smaller, Mike, we definitely they had a teaching uh, sure. piece. And back when it was, they were separate, they all had I think, at, one least subject, at least two classes. At yeah. least two at least, classes. At least one yeah. and sometimes two. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we actually made that decision to not have them as in classroom teachers mm -hmm. when we we squished them and saved a lot of money by sure. having fewer right in the in these coordinator roles. So yeah. fewer we had three instead of five. Yeah. Administrators. Yeah. yeah. We, um, we reduced. It was a it was a good savings there in that particular okay. budget year. That was that was one of our budget cuts like this year. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that we had to go figure out how to do it. Understand that one of their jobs is curriculum writing. Mm -hmm. We have teachers do curriculum writing too, right? Mm -hmm. We pay extra yeah. for that, for, for weekends and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So, yes. I mean, they're doing curriculum writing. We're paying teachers to do curriculum writing. It's a, an enormous task. And, uh, right, no, I, yeah. I, I so, saw the presentation. So it, um, it's collaborative. Um, we want everyone to, the, the, that is willing to have ownership of the curriculum. Um, and we can't forget that writing of curriculum doubles as professional development and so we really you, you get a, a two-part bang for your buck with that because the process of writing the curriculum and the thinking and the reflecting and the the researching expands the capacity of the individual uh, or the team uh, engaged in that so um, and then yeah just to, just to reiterate the the you know the scrubbing part the the WPCA the, the I guess that's the, the sewer um, there's a little bit of uh, this is overhearing what the Board of Finance and Board of Selectmen said yesterday. Uh, the group life insurance, I guess there's like twelve thousand dollars there in savings, or so. And uh, I don't have the hard numbers in front of me, but it was there was something there. Maybe there was seven. Now I think about it. Um, but everything's being looked at. Yeah. So but yeah, I just I, wanted I didn't see savings in that account. The I've, at the spend rate we're going at this year. No, I think I'm it was. I think it was. I think it was budget seventy two, and it didn't move at sixty four. So at, that's, there's at something. The there. spend rate that we're going this year. I just did the calculation yesterday. The spend rate we're going because that was one of the questions from the first selectman. At the spend rate we're going this year, we'll end up about four or five hundred dollars under the seventy two thousand dollars. Under the seventy two mm -hmm. from the sixty four. 
It seems like a big jump from the pre from what I saw the years prior. Yeah. So there's just a big I jump. Guess. Is there a reason for that? I don't know. I did not. Uh, I just did the calculation yesterday. Oh. Okay. Well, it's, it kills me there. Um, yeah, and I don't have all of the. I mean, the little things. The the seven thousand dollars here, twelve thousand dollars here. Uh, I guess cafeteria tables was a thing that was taken out of a general fund, and it should have been taken out of the cafeteria fund. Um, so maybe could we maybe I wouldn't say that that's find accurate. some kind yeah, of I don't we, think that's we accurate. Bought, we bought them, we budgeted them and bought them out of the cafeteria fund last year, and we can't use the cafeteria so fund money to buy it to repay us. So it was out of cafeteria money. Yes. Okay. No, no, no. It was bought no. out of the general fund, but it okay. was last right. year, and we can't use cafeteria money to reimburse us for a purchase we made in a prior. That's year. kind of my question. We are buying more cafeteria tables with the uh, lunch money, lunch fund this year. Okay. We, we, so are we are doing very well with our lunch program, and so we're, you're only allowed to use any excess funds in the cafeteria fund, uh, which is only raised by purchasing lunches. It is not taxpayer money. Yeah. Um, and any the, the money there could be used to buy tables, could be, you know, whatever, whatever things we need, like a, like a new pocket. stove, a fridge, whatever. Yeah. So that's what that could be we're used for. We're putting in a new uh, range hood over the uh, Panini uh, machine in the high school cafeteria from that lunch fund money. So, so they're, they're very specific guidelines of what you can and cannot use that money for. And you cannot use that money to reimburse for prior, you know, prior, for, for prior year's purchases. We have looked into that. Yeah. They cannot do that. Um, you know, also, uh, I, I wanted to mention uh, you know, hiring teachers at you know, specific steps. Obviously, that dictates how much money they make. Uh, you know, we hired a pre-K teacher that you know, I'm not going to throw a specific number out, but mm -hmm. it's significantly higher than the kindergarten teacher yep. uh, that we were looking at. And I was kind of wondering, can that be a factor with, you know, for future hires that we kind of look at the five-step range, that the 7.5? Mm -hmm. So part of that, Mike, is it's a great question because you, when you look at it there, you, you don't know what goes into that right. decision. That's why um, a big part of what goes into hiring, uh, number one, let's just make, make it clear for those folks who might be watching at home. I think, Ken, it's uh, step seven with a master's is the kind of average we yeah. use for hiring a, a, a person in district uh, in case we um, really find someone that's the right match uh, that has a lot of experience. Um, in shortage areas, um, we typically end up hiring people with a lot more experience because it's a shortage area. So if they want to come to Brookfield, it's a desirable place to work. Um, someone with a lot of experience in a shortage area where we do not have a lot of candidates and of the candidates that apply, they're not all of the Brookfield quality that we desire. And so um, we tend to, in a, in a physics or maybe a, a specialized math area um, or in speech and language, uh, hire more experienced people. In pre-K, in that particular example you're talking about, there was a dearth of candidates. It's a certification issue. There's not a lot of people with the pre-K certification. And if you're in the way pre-K certification works, if you don't have the special education certification as part of that, you cannot be a pre-K teacher. You'd be out of compliance. So you, ha you, you, have a, you start with a very limited pool because of the nature of the state certification. So that's a big part of what went into that decision. And then, of course, we thought there was a very a, a super high quality person, and so we brought that person on. Well, that was the decision that yeah, was made. I but we also I'm brought in numbers. So yeah. But no, no, no. And to your point, there was a new kindergarten teacher we brought on much Same lower thing, on the step. Even less, yeah. Uh, you know, first real job. Even and, less than we know, budgeted for. Yeah, exactly, on. exactly. And so um, very nice. it all... There's, there's usually a, like you were talking about earlier, there usually ends up being a salary savings every single year anyway. Right. Um, so I think we're managing the grid quite well. Yeah, so a couple of years was over $500,000. In, in, this, in, in savings? salaries. Yeah, well, with subs and, and all oh, yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, I guess, you know, when I, when I look at the sub number, the 375, it's just kind of like, I know it's kind of more of a placeholder. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, is it... You know, it could be based on, you know, how many subs we typically use a, a year. I think that's how you do based it on history, of, right? Well, it's, okay. again, it's, it's really difficult. It's been kind of volatile the last couple of years because we've had so many long-term leaves. And we have. When I first started here, the recent history was, was much lower. I mean, we, we had, uh, I think, about 40 leaves, all different kinds of leaves, last year. That's 10% of the staff. And that's not just teachers. That's that's across the different, yeah. uh, the six different uh, well, bargaining units we have. I, I, so I, I you know, family hard, leaves or whatever they might be. Yeah. And so that it's volatible, and it's it it could be very expensive if you have someone who's on a leave entitled to their salary 
in terms of eight or 12 weeks of sick time. And then on top of that, you have to hire a sub as well. Um, there's also a rule with with subs. So sometimes you get a great amount of savings, like you're talking about, Mike. Other times it's very expensive because yeah. the substitute, um, after 40 days, you have to hire the, the person if they're in the teacher rank at a step one salary. They can't just be at the sub rate. So there's a lot of mandates and rules that when you just look at the grid, you don't un you don't know. And so these are great questions right, but to help the, clarify. The, the, the 118 that you put in November, I mean, it's already, what, over 200? That's for, yes, the savings. Them. Yeah. yeah. And, and vacancies, too. I mean, we still leaves, have yeah. some and vacancies. Months, so and we, we still have some months to go. So, so for example. We're looking at over, yeah. I mean, we can maybe extrapolate that. We have 118 in November. And well, that's what that's what yeah. he's doing to try to get us so we can cover, you know, and why we're on the freeze, too, so we can cover the overage in special education. That's a big part of it. The other part is for, like you know, I'm thinking of Mr. Belanda back there, for, for over, you know, almost a, I don't know, a year, Mark? Where's Mark? Right here. How long has it been without a head? Um, essentially, it's been over a year. Yeah. So it's been over a year that we have not been able to fill the, the head custodian position here at the high school with a permanent person. We had uh, a person join us who... It wasn't right for that person. Then we had another person join us uh, in the last few months. It wasn't right for that person. And so there's a significant savings there because you don't, you're not filling uh, a full-time position that's in the budget. So there's other areas where you get savings. On the other hand, it's very difficult to manage the building without that, that position. Right, so we can't assume we'll continue yeah. with that savings. No. So you no. have to... And yeah. I refine that calculation every month before yeah. I do my financial report. That's why it changes every month. Yeah, but no, I do, but, I but do, it, it do changes... It. Up every month. I mean, that's because we're, we're not filling that one, position. Right, but we're then also filling. we have to factor in the subs. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so okay. Yeah, I just wanted to probe that, probe that, yeah. that number because it's oh, a big yeah. number. These it's, are great questions. It's a big number. And it's okay. a good discussion at public on this salary point when we're meeting with them next Wednesday. Yeah. I think that's going to be a very critical that we go slowly and deliberately on what's been happening with salaries in this current year mm -hmm. because it was very clear to me listening to the last meeting and I think you were watching the, the video of, yesterday. Yeah, from yesterday. Yeah. Um, it seems to be more viewed as more happenstance than in fact this is exactly what's happening, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to be more factual and more deliberate in terms of saying here's what happens in the summer and then here's what's happened through the year here's what's driving substitute costs and here's what's driving salary savings and the more and uh, that's why I asked you for some of that data that you have right um, I sent that to you yeah well, thank you for that and I'm gonna look through that and maybe on Monday's meeting we can sit down and say how do you tell that story mm -hmm. because it's very clear to me the our brethren in the board of finance and the board and the board of selectmen seem to say they just keep underrunning it so it must be something mm -hmm. you're misbudgeting right instead of it's real things that are happening right okay. and so and why is it that it continues to get under more and more under it's because positions are open and here's what's happening mm -hmm. would it right? be beneficial to make that part of that update that we yeah that, that's what yeah. we have this yeah. update that yeah. ought to be absolutely part of that update mm -hmm. we right. have on Wednesday so uh, but I think that's a story that we're talking about too generally, and, and both the substitutes and the mm -hmm. salaries, that needs more specificity, mm -hmm. right? Because I think it will help our brethren and help us tell the story of what's happening in the world. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. John, I'm, I'm also trying to think of things maybe we haven't thought of. Um, and one thing I, that just crossed my mind was we currently have 182 student days, but we're required to have 180, is that yeah. correct? So I would be curious to know your thoughts on, first of all, what would the, the impact to the mm -hmm. kids be, mm -hmm. the students be, if we reduce to 180? And then, Ken, what would the financial implication be? Would would there be enough of a savings doing that to make it worth it? That's a very difficult question to answer because I don't know if that would save us any money, especially with the teachers, because their contract says that we pay them for 187 days. Right. I'm thinking of buses. Oh, definitely. Transportation is a saving. Paras. Paras. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that could certainly be calculated, but the, that's not the bulk I, of our I don't costs, think it's certainly. an easy question to answer, yeah. but that's why I wanted yeah. to ask it now in preparation for our next mm -hmm. meeting because I think 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, a good, it's a good That's thing a good to put on a list. Oh, yeah. Pull yeah, some piece numbers. Of list. Um, I think that we should, uh, again, uh, I'm trying to think of anything that we haven't thought of mm -hmm. that, you know, everything's going to be painful, but... Mm -hmm. Maybe if we can mm -hmm. find things that are less painful. Yeah, no, that's that. It's yeah. it's the lesser of the evils. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think the para contract might also have the number of days, but I'm not positive. I have to, I have to look at the language. Nurses, you know, all, whatever, whoever yeah. we could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know it's only like five thousand dollars, but they were they mentioned the uh, audit, five thousand. Savings, mm -hmm. save five thousand on an audit. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Mean. What does that mean? Marsh is doing some work, right? You could share that. Yeah, we yeah. we normally uh, reimburse the town twenty five thousand dollars for our half of the town audit, and we were expecting that to go up to thirty thousand dollars, but since uh, and I spoke to Marsha about this a couple weeks ago. Since uh, she puts the financial statement, the year in financial statement together, it's saving the town money, so we. Can back, back go back down to twenty five thousand. Nice. So, so that'll, that, be that, that'll be one of your updates. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, when, when you know, it's a little, I know again, it's like five thousand, eight thousand, seven thousand, whatever. Um, I mean, is there like a ballpark on maybe what let's call it incendiary, incendiary um, findings we can get? Well, that, that, well, that that's what we're. Because I mean, it sounds like that's what we're, we're putting together. On. That's what we're working on. It could it could be a that could be a, a good decent chunk as well. You talk about the insurance. We talked about the insurance tonight. That right. could be one hundred sixty thousand dollars, one hundred seventy thousand. Find another one hundred seventy thousand. Yeah. Just, you well, know, and, and, and there's going to be a lot of things we don't do. I'm going to be very honest with you, and that's what the right. principals are looking at. You know, um, we're going to slow down on a lot of things. There's no doubt about it. Talked with Dr. Ruby on on not doing some professional development. You know, to to try to find some significant savings um, to get to eight hundred seventeen thousand dollars and possibly much more. Um, you have to take drastic measures. Um, we could do all this you're talking about, Mike, and we could right. find some significant savings. Um, we can scrub our budgets and not have memberships for a year or dues and fees to other things and knock down on some of the travel and some of the, some of the PD events. But at the end of the day, that, that doesn't get you hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'll it just assume, doesn't. I'll assume that is, was in the 100 and what, some odd questions that were. Well, that's what we've been working mm -hmm. on. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's well over 100 yeah. questions. So we're, and we want to give a thorough responsible answer that, that people can understand. So we're working on that. Will you send those question responses out before our meeting on Monday? Yeah. My intention is to get it out to you on Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it's yeah. useful to be able to look at it over <laughs> the yeah. weekend. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. With a big cup of coffee. <laughs> Monday is the Board of Finance? Yeah. No, no, no. no, no. Monday, Monday is our finance so committee I mean, meeting, yeah. and Wednesday is the Board of Finance yeah. meeting. Which, so every, they, which we're all welcome to attend. Yeah. I don't think we're in session, no. but but uh, but we're all welcome to attend. Them. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions <coughs> or comments on that? Okay. So we can move on to our last item. Well, yeah, which is the new school building project. Um, not too much um, of an update on that. Um, actually. Yesterday, I met with the media center specialists and Tecton um, to kind of go over their um, their deep look at how the latest version of the current floor plan is looking for them, how they're going to use the space programmatically, um, and some things kind of shifted around inside the building. So I think um, you know it, it was a really positive meeting, and I think you know um, we're sort of really trying to figure out um, what's best for students and how are we going to have this multi-level media center and how are students really going to use it and how are the media specialists actually going to, you know, maintain and manage their collections, which was, you know, a big part of their concern. So um, so I think it was it was really good communication with that group and, um, you know, those, those types of meetings will continue to kind of really finalize everything. Yeah, and, and Rose, um, I thank you yeah. for being able to attend that. Yeah. I, I wasn't able to attend the meeting, and um, it was nice having you there. And, and actually, the media specialist uh, commented to Eddie after you left that they really appreciated uh, a board member's presence there. Um, in addition to that, Eddie was down to meet with um, uh, 
Mr. Baldwin, our athletic director, phys ed health coordinator, and uh, work with uh, Matt Cudney, one of our phys ed teachers. Uh, he's an elementary phys ed teacher. And so they went over the spaces again and looked at the office space and uh, the uh, gross motor uh, space and uh, the health uh, room and areas and swing spaces and they really had a good uh, discussion and as well as met with our technology director Mr. Conklin uh, so you know the user groups continue to meet with the architects as we need to and um, it's been really positive we just continue to refine things that's what design development is supposed to be and so we continue to do that and one thing I'll just say sort of like as an aside is maybe something to keep on our radar for when this school finally does open. But, um, you know, one of the things that they were talking about was in terms of managing I, really two separate collections, one on the top floor and one on the bottom floor, was the real necessity of having two full-time library clerks to help them manage those collections while they're doing, you know, classes. So, um, you know, those are positions that had been cut in the past, so we just need to... Yeah keep that on our radar as we have know, two today we have we one have, in each school we have one. we have one at huckleberry. huckleberry one at huckleberry and then um, at we have one at the high school and one at the middle school but none in center there's right. none in center so that means so they're so they're basically saying that we need to hire an additional Another person one. that's what they're that's what they said to rose that's what they okay. yeah in their, in their meeting sure i was clear yeah. on whether we were maintaining or adding, so adding. Like, this is an yeah. ad yeah okay so, yeah. Any other questions about that? Okay. So this was a quick meeting, but we can move on to our three main points. Financial, uh, financial think, presentation. What's that? The what? The Monday. Uh -oh. the, uh, the school, school finance. finance meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Should we have something in there on the budget? It's really I mean, Mike sort of had a, a lot of really good questions that might be good to sort of actually put, I don't know, a quick summary. That, that the administrative team like is going to come back and um, yes. on March 18th and really just, you yep. know, have I a, do think you a recommended need to say plan. Something about the budget, mm -hmm. right? yeah. yeah, something like that. That, that would work. Mm -hmm. We're talking um, about all our awards. <laughs> that's we what I was <laughs> yeah, the gate <laughs> I mean, Excuse me, cable awards. <laughs> It's oh, the generator. Uh, well, I'd, I'd do that. I'd, I'd, I'd actually, I would, I would take this opportunity to synopsize what you just said about mm -hmm. the building, right? Continuing okay. the design work and yeah. talking about the layout of the floors, and then I'd talk about the awards. Yeah. That's that's what I'd do. That'd be three good things. I mean, the whole agenda was policies. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not like, there wasn't a lot of. Um, well, I, I feel like that was four things, mm -hmm. though. Five. <laughs> Five, maybe. <laughs> oh my gosh, what do you have there, Deb? I have school finance meeting, I have a budget discussion, I have cable awards, and then we talked about the new school project. So, With the finance project, did we send enough information out on that on Facebook? Do we need to say it again? I don't know if that's a little bit old news. I don't know. Just trying to narrow it down to three. Yeah. I think we should talk about our awards. I don't think we brag enough about ourselves. Okay. We do good things. Well, it's about communication. I think people ought to know that, you know, the award, the primary awards were about the school project, and people have complimented yeah. this, yeah. this uh, the schools about that communication. Mm -hmm. So sure. the fact that the state recognizes it is a really good thing. So. Do you have three now? Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank Up you. <laughs> upcoming <laughs> events. Okay. Upcoming events for March 5th through March 20th. I did, because we have a couple of half days coming up. Center Elementary School has a PTO meeting at 9.30 on Tuesday, March 10th. On Friday, March 13th is Pi Day. Principal Diamond will be sending more information on that to the families. And Thursday, March 19th and Friday, March 20th is Spring Parent Teacher Conferences dismissal at 12.20. At Huckleberry, Friday, March 6th is a PTO meeting at 9.30. Friday, March 13th is a PTO movie night, Abominable. That starts at 6.30. Wednesday, March 18th, report cards are available on the portal, and Thursday, March 19th, and Friday, March 20th, spring parent-teacher conferences dismissal at 12.20. At Wiskineer, we have on Friday, March 6th, Brookfield High School counselors will be visiting to speak to eighth graders. On Tuesday, March 10th, spring parent-teacher conferences from 12.30 to 2.45, dismissal is at 11.40. Wednesday, March 11th, is the seventh grade cultural assembly. 
Birds of Prey, sponsored by the PTO. Friday, March 13th, Bingo Night at 6 o'clock, also sponsored by PTO. Tuesday, March 17th, is a fifth grade cultural assembly. That's the Dragon King Tanglewood Marionettes, sponsored by PTO. And on Wednesday, March 18th, is an eighth grade cultural assembly. That's also Birds of Prey and also sponsored by PTO. And at Brookfield High School on Thursday, March 12th, we have spring parent-teacher conferences dismissal at 11. Also on Thursday, March 12th, is the BHS Career and Tech Ed Department date night for parents. I don't have a start time on that. I think it was six, what 6 time 15. is this? 6.15. 6.15? Yeah. And, yeah. Six, what? 6.15. Thursday, March 19th, Friday, March 20th, Saturday, March 21st, and Sunday, March 22nd is the BHS musical, How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. The evening shows on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 p.m. and a matinee on Sunday at 2. That's they it. always okay. do a great job. Yeah. Okay. Anything else tonight? All right. Well, without objection, meeting adjourned. I almost...